If the supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park experiences another major eruption, it could spew ash thousands of miles across the United States, damaging buildings, killing crops and shutting down power plants. This would be a major disaster. But that doesn't mean we should all start panicking. Luckily, the chances of that happening are quite low. The Yellowstone supervolcano is thousands of times more powerful than a regular volcano and has only experienced three very large eruptions in its history. One occurred 2.1 million years ago, one occurred 1.3 million years ago, and another 664,000 years ago. Still, Yellowstone's supervolcano remains an endless source of apocalyptic fascination, and it's not hard to see why. In September 2014, a team of scientists published a paper in Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems that explored what the Yellowstone supereruption was actually like. Among other things, they found that the volcano was capable of burying states like Wyoming, Montana, Idaho and Colorado in three feet of dangerous volcanic ash, a mix of rock and glass fragments, and blanketing the Midwest. That much ash can kill plants and animals, destroy roofs, and cause short circuits in all kinds of electrical equipment hidden beneath Yellowstone National Park is a reservoir of hot magma five miles deep fed by giant plumes of molten rock flowing from hundreds of miles below. The heat is responsible for many of the park's famous geysers and hot springs. And as the magma rises into the chamber and cools, the ground above it periodically rises and falls. In a rare event throughout history, this magma chamber has erupted. Most eruptions in Yellowstone are smaller lava flows. The last occurred on the Pitchstone Plateau about 70,000 years ago. The most likely eruption scenario at Yellowstone is a small event that produces lava flows similar to what is happening at Berarbunga in Iceland today and possibly volcanic explosions in general. This was most likely triggered by a series of earthquakes in certain areas of the national park as magma rose to the surface. Now, if a much larger supereruption occurred, the warning signs would be much greater. We may be the first to see intense seismic activity throughout the park, Lowenstern said. It can take weeks or months for the earthquake to break apart the rock above the magma before an eruption occurs. And what if we actually experienced a super eruption, an event that was 1000 times more powerful than a typical volcanic eruption, ejected at least 240 cubic miles of material and lasted for weeks or months? The lava flow itself would be contained within a relatively small radius within the park, say, about 40 miles or so. In fact, only about a third of the material is actually released into the atmosphere. The greatest damage came from volcanic ash, a combination of broken rock and glass, which was thrown miles into the air and spread across the country. In their new paper, Lowenstern and his colleagues looked at historical ash deposits and advanced modeling to conclude that the eruption would have created an umbrella cloud, even expanding in all directions. A major eruption could bury the northern Rocky Mountains in three feet of ash destroying large swaths of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana and Utah. Meanwhile, the Midwest region will be hit by several inches of ash, while both coastal regions will be hit by smaller amounts of ash. 
The exact distribution depends on the time of year and weather patterns either scenario would be bad news. That much volcanic ash is capable of killing humans, plants, animals and destroying buildings. Even the few inches of ash that most of the country can get can destroy farms, clog highways, cause serious respiratory problems, clog sewer lines, and even short-circuit transformers. Air travel had to be halted in most of North America. A volcanic eruption of that size would also have a major impact on the global climate. Volcanoes can emit sulfur aerosols that reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere, cooling the climate. These particles are short-lived in the atmosphere, so their effects are only temporary, but they can still be very dramatic. 